good morning to everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, uh, my name is Maria Elena Placencia, and I am a sales director at Fortune Development Group, and I am responsible for this amazing project here at 1030 South Beach. Um, this development is unique in so many ways, but in that we are providing an upscale uh, urban living in a beautifully designed boutique smart building with many coveted amenities. Uh, joining us today is uh, Sean Saladino of Saladino Design Studios and Masood Shojai, President and Chairman of Shona Group. They will be able to offer answers to many of your questions about this amazing development and give you each a rare inside look to the development through their eyes. I will be leaving time at the end to uh, answer questions. So if you have questions that you'd like to ask, please go ahead and start adding them to the Q&A uh, and we will get to them at the very end. Also, I would like to let everyone know that this uh, session is being recorded and everyone will receive an email before the end of today with the link to the recording that they can use or pass on or send to any clients. So we look forward to all your comments and we hope that you enjoyed today's 1030 Talks presentation. So without further ado, Sean, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and about Saladino Design Studios? Hi, thank you guys. So my name is Sean Saladino. I'm a studio director of architecture and design at Saladino Design Studios. Uh, the studio was founded in 2008, and our primary discipline is hospitality. Um, we don't do a lot of residential, um, but when unique opportunities like uh, the 1030 project were presented to us, kind of gives us the ability to bring some of our influential hospitality type design into the residential aspect. And, you know, with the guys at Shoma with Masood and his kind of vision and allowing us to kind of express ourselves with our area of expertise, it, you know, made the project something a little bit more unique for us and, and kind of got us to uh, sign on to a project where typically, you know, we wouldn't do some residential. So um, it was an amazing opportunity. It's been an amazing process with this team and uh, we're very excited for the project and uh, we look forward to uh, completing this and launching it to the world. Well, thank you so much. We look forward to it too. Um, Masood, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and about Shomo? Good morning, first of all. And, Good morning. Uh, hey, uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people heard uh, of uh, Shomo and they're familiar with what we do. We started in 1985 and we concentrate basically our primary uh, business was uh, uh, building residential uh, single family townhouses until early 2000. Then we got involved with the offices, office buildings. So that was another branch of our uh, company that uh, concentrated on building offices. Then uh, three years after, uh, we decided we're gonna do more and we branch out to mixed use project. That was the earliest stage of the mixed use project at those in those times. And uh, we uh, kind of like it, it's a challenging and uh, we always like to find something new and explore something new in the construction industry. And um, we have delivered uh, more than 10, 11,000 units uh, either single family or apartment, either rental or uh, condos at different stages, uh, retail. Uh, we uh, delivered about a million square feet of uh, retail uh, so far or more. Uh, we have uh, different projects uh, on pipeline uh, that is combination of uh, everything. So um, we concentrate on mixed use right now and we believe in the, it's it just the lifestyle is gonna change as it's changing and there's a, a lot of uh, evolution uh, in how we live. So we really respond on what is gonna come at us. And uh, sometimes uh, we are fortunate that we anticipate that. And then we kind of uh, establish and uh, set up ourselves an org organization to go to that route. Okay, fantastic, thank you. Um, Sean, this first question is for you. 
So what inspired your vision for 1030 South Beach? I'm going to go ahead and put... Mm -hmm, go ahead. So the inspiration, uh, is, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. Um, growing up, I watched a TV show, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. It's a show called Buy Me Vice. And I was enamored by the beauty of South Beach. And, you know, and now I go back and look at, uh, look at the, the show as it's kind of repeated um, and see how gritty and how non-impressive it was. But back in the day, the colors and the beauty of the skyline and, you know, the ocean and everything that, you know, they kind of propped up of South Beach was the most inspiring thing to me. I knew one day I would live in Miami and, um, you know, we, we had this opportunity to design a concept that was colorful and bright, but something that was a little bit of a throwback, you know, very similar to that kind of mix of what you would see in maybe Palm Springs and a tribute uh, a little bit to the Art Deco inspired type architecture. Um, but also too, adding a little bit of an influence um, for a modern style design. So it didn't feel so much like kind of one of the standard Art Deco buildings. So the inspiration was really the, the color and the energy that South Beach you know, has always um, held a place in my heart. And the beauty of uh, you know, what South Beach kind of always um, is known for and the color and the essence of the architecture. So the inspiration was really kind of more a little bit of a throwback, uh, a mix between what you would see maybe in Palm Springs meets Miami Beach with a little bit of that New York international vibe to it. So that was really the inspiration, but it kind of really, the first thing that popped into my head was, you know, a throwback to the, the era of Miami Vice. Um, obviously, you know, not including the drug references. <laughs> Uh, absolutely. Now, it's my understanding that uh, the, the filming of Miami Vice is what basically created South Beach. It, it absolutely was. I mean, I remember Friday nights watching that show and saying, this has to be, this place can't be real. It's the most magical and beautiful place I've ever seen. And, and, we're probably, and we're probably dating ourselves as well. Okay, so to that end, uh, I'd like to go ahead and share. Do you see the, the, the new share here with the pool? Okay, fantastic. So to that end, um, you mentioned that the colors are you were inspired by what is South Beach, what is the Art Deco. Tell us, what was the idea behind this pink pool? Well, you know, when, when, when you come home or when you're home, right, you know, especially in today's day and age, you know, what Masu just touched on, you know, being able to anticipate the future of the way the world is going to be. You know, nobody really knows, but I think the inspiration behind that is having something that's a little unique and different, feeling as if when you leave your apartment and go up to the top floor and sit out by the pool, you want to kind of feel as if, you know, I am home, but I feel like I've been kind of transposed into this, uh, you know, resort type atmosphere. And typically, you know, what these buildings are doing with some of the other developers are very standard. They're very blase. They're, there's not a lot of like uh, interest in what they're doing. The pools are very cookie cutter. The surroundings are very cookie cutter. Um, we wanted something that just kind of brought us back to the beautiful colors and, and skyline um, and just influences that South Beach, you know, really had back in the day. It was very pastel. It was very light. It was very, it was very, you know, energetic with the colors. And you know, pink happens to be one of my favorite colors. And you know, when we talk, we're talking to the with the team. We said, hey, look, let's just go out there. Let's let's put something out there that's going to be a little different. And um, you know, everybody will look great in a pink pool. Absolutely, I couldn't uh, I couldn't agree with you more on that. It, it's uh, not if you remember that uh, when uh, yeah, I said we want to do a pink pool and everybody was saying, well, we've never seen pink pool and it's a challenging because we don't know uh, any contractor that is going to be able to do it. And we contacted different contractors, of course, and uh, they were not aware of how they're going to do that. So we had to go and uh, get this contractor from uh, really Italy and they do that. And uh, so they're going to bring all the material here. So that, that create that pink pool, which, uh, you know, makes it so different. You know, it's different, uh, the element that we have, as Sean mentioned. 
Oh, absolutely. And, and, and in my opinion, this is going to be, uh, you know, 1030 is going to be the building with the pink pool um, for um, forever. <laughs> Once it's built. Forever. It's, it, forever. This is a very beautiful, very unique um, amenity. So that brings me to you, um, Masu. Can you tell us a little bit about why you chose this specific site for 1030? And for those of us joining us today, we are located on 15th Street uh, mm -hmm. between Lenox Avenue and Michigan Avenue. So what was it about this site that made you say, this is where I'm going to build my next my next development. As they always say, location, location, location. <laughs> and walkability. You have to be able to, the, con the concept of this project really, uh, here I categorize uh, Miami Beach uh, for four different products in general. One, you have a single family, which is totally different, uh, the uh, business, and uh, they have their own, which is limited and they have their own clientele. Then you have and sort of fifth that basically there's not much property left, but you have to be very creative. Maybe you have a water view and that attracts other type of uh, buyers. Mm -hmm. Then you have a property right on the beach that is a totally different concept and you make it super luxury, but it's just for really the people that they wanna stay in beach for two months or three months or, um, in that for that for that reason then we come to infill project and this is what we are infill so that covers any type of people that are looking for any type of purposes if there's a local that's going to be a permanent or the secondary home but they want to have access they don't want to drive even though we created a parking spaces for them which is kind of unusual in this infill uh, site in Miami Beach but the walkability is very important you, because you want to come and walk either from your apartment or from the lobby, just come to the, uh, you know, the street and see kind of people and go to Lincoln Road. You want to go to diners and a lot of things happening in Lincoln Road and there's a lot of expansion going on. Uh, as we mentioned last time that uh, 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 Amazon is opening up a four star uh, store and uh, you have Trader Joe's uh, right in the corner. So you, you don't have to, it just contains people in that part of location. So they walk anywhere close by to, to their site and they don't have to go and drive uh, to go somewhere else. So anything they want, they can find it in that two miles radius. Uh, they wanna go to the beach, they can walk for 10, 15 minutes right at the beach or you can uh, ride your bike so it's a lot going on over there. It's, it's, it's just a uh, kind of a, uh, you're in a resort and uh, you, you have your life and you have the good uh, uh, positive of a uh, kind of a resort uh, lifestyle. No, absolutely. You know, South Beach is definitely one of the most unique cities, I think, in all of Miami-Dade in that this is very much a walking city. Especially you know, you're on Alton Road, and Alton Road is expanding, and every day, mm -hmm. every time they are building our new office buildings, the, the very interesting uh, structure is coming up all the time, different restaurants is opening up. So Alton Road is one of the major roads in Miami Beach, and it's uh, really uh, coming along. It is, and very residential still, you know. Very um, residential, yes. Very residential, which makes it, you know, safer, secure, and gives that sense of community. Absolutely. So, I'm gonna before I get to my next question, I need to put, I need to put the picture up because you know they say a picture is a thousand words. Is that what it is? Pictures of a thousand words. Okay. So, for this next one, this one is for Sean, and um, here we go. Are you guys able to see my new screen, or do I have to do new share? Okay. Are we seeing the rendering now of the bedroom? Yes. Okay, fantastic. So Sean, my next one is for you. Please tell me, what was your idea here behind this peekaboo shower, peekaboo bathroom? I notice this is something that's trending now. So with, with my, you know, for everybody that knows the history of South Beach, South Beach has these kind of 
you know, back in the day, it was all about sexuality. It was all about, you know, beautiful people and just the inhibitions were just not there. Um, so, I mean, people love to be voyeuristic. They love to kind of, just, you know, let's, let's face it, there's a lot of very pretty people out there in South Beach. And the era of kind of giving them something different, making it feel as if, you know, there's this voyeuristic kind of component to the bedroom and to the bathroom. It makes it really interesting. It makes it an amenity that, you know, being home and, and the traditional type bathroom that's just standard and, you know, there's really nothing to it. But this is kind of inspired with, you know, going back to that whole uh, era of South Beach and the beautification of South Beach and how beautiful people were and just being able to kind of have that voyeuristic influence where you live. Um, it's an element of uh, excitement, you know, instead of watching TV, you're watching different elements inside your, your bedroom. And it really is just something that's a little different and unique uh, for the project that, you know, makes people's imaginations kind of go wild and you can have fun with your your wife or your spouse or your husband boyfriend whatever it is and it's just uh it's just an interesting add-on to a project that there's so many things out there that are just kind of standard it's just something a little different uh, you know i absolutely and to that end i remember speaking with um, a gentleman and we were going over the floor plans and i said well this one provides a much bigger closet and he said who needs a big closet in <laughs> we don't wear anything. I was like, okay. <laughs> so, uh, yes, and I think we just learned a lot about you, Sean, on a personal level, but I digress. Okay, so, Matsu, this next one is for you. Um, what is it that you admire most about the, uh, the entire design that is 1030 South Beach? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But what's your favorite? What's 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 the part that when you know when you look at it or when you hear about it, you just it just makes you, you smile. Know, you can't. Um, you just you know that they, you started thinking some ideas, and as it goes by, then you uh, put the pieces together and put the right people together, and you share your concept uh, with them, and they understand you. Sean understands us very well, and. They came up really add to our uh, the, my vision. There are, there are different pieces that I didn't think about, and it really it was a great compliment. So the the whole entire flow of coming from the lobby, how is it, how is it designed? The elements that you have a bricks, so you're, you're giving that kind of a warm looking uh, the uh, sensation uh, that you want to come. And you see something different, you know. You don't see either is a leather or a, a panel walls or something. It's, it's, it's just something cool that you see is combination of maybe old looking or a brand new, uh, modern looking together as a clash of that. It just makes us really uh, nice and interesting. So it, it's the whole uh, thing, the flow, the design, uh, how we uh, uh, created uh, these uh, terraces for the third floor and the second floor. The second floor have a uh, different uh, feeling because you come down to your patio and then you have the gate. So you don't have to come through the lobby. You can come from the street, go into your patio and go to inside your unit or you're riding a bike. Uh, so you can use that. So if, if you look at a, a lobby, look at the elements that we put and all these elements, we just expand it to every, uh, in the bedroom or in the hallway. So it, it came out really something very boutique. The, the whole idea was to give a feeling, if it's a boutique building, it has to like a boutique feeling of uh, all the elements that we're gonna put in there. And Sean was able to really create that. I mean, uh, the hallway are different. Look at the lighting fixtures are different. Uh, and again, you see the panels are there and then the concrete panels in the hallway, right? rather than just a regular drywall or wallpaper or just paint it. So we want to keep just a kind of a rough looking and uh, also with the element of that makes it uh, soften. Uh, I'm stepping out to the uh, Sean uh, territory now and I'm be becoming very creative <laughs> here. <clears throat> but, but I understood it. I understood it. The, 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 the carpet, the color of the carpet, the, the, the carpet that designed for that, you know, it, 
everything really, you go to the terrace and um, you go to the rooftop and how the pool is designed, the location of the yoga and the barbecue area and all the elements that they put, the trellises, it's really feeling that you are, uh, you're somewhere else. You just, you are in a garden. You get, you know, the, this is, uh, you can't be really relaxed if you want, then you can go to the pool. So this is just something that you really soothes you, you know, and uh, you want every place that you go, you want to be comfortable. You want to be relaxed and enjoy, enjoy the building. You, you look at all the elements uh, everywhere you go, there's uh, something to look at and appreciate that, you know, where would they got the idea? This is really cool. I never thought that this is something that I want to do for, to um, uh, somewhere else. I'm going to copy this. So it's simple, very minimalistic, but is on the other hand has a lot of elements uh, that uh, just uh, flows together. And uh, Sean really read my mind and created this, uh, uh, really project that uh, I'm very happy with it and I'm really proud of every element. Oh, thank you. It, 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 I mean, I'm happy with it. It's a beautiful project. When I came to look at it, I was very excited to join your team and, and to be a part of this for all the reasons that... Um, that well, I love it so much that you're gonna, I'm going to stay with one of the units, so... <laughs> so ah, um, you, just get, you just gave away a secret. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The de well, you know what? The developer is in-house, too. So, so the, all, the, all the owners, if you have any issues, just go knock on his door. It, it, um, yeah, it, it's not <laughs> easy to repeat these projects. I, I like to keep on as a, you know, the, as a, uh, just to use it. It's, it's great because a lot, I don't want to just finish building it and uh, sell it and just walk away. I really I love this building so much that I just want to have the... Uh, continue my, uh, you know, the uh, participation in this building and uh, use this building. That's great. Um, that's actually, you know, that's, a, you know, a testament to just how much you, you really truly enjoy the building. Absolutely. And so now, Sean, back, back to you. Um, was this a challenging project for you? Um, and why or why not? Well, the, the honest answer is absolutely not. I mean, you know, when you have a client that says hey, this is kind of the broad strokes of what you want, um, and you really kind of vibe on it from the get-go, it makes it a lot easier um, for us. So from a challenging standpoint, no, absolutely not. I mean, we really kind of attached ourselves to the project from the moment, you know, we got the call from the suit. Uh, we really picked up on his vibe, his energy, his excitement for the project. And, um, you know, for us, we have we have a great connection and a great love for South Beach, so we really put our blood, sweat, and tears in this. And this was really like an all-team uh, effort, and everybody from our team kind of had their influence, and it just turned into what it actually became. And you know, like like Mr. said, we're very proud of this project, and you know, from the uniqueness and style to the ability to have multiple different kind of areas that. And we say it's something for everyone. Um, it just kind of all flowed together. Um, and we, you know, every time we would kind of present and, and as a design kind of, you know, kind of progress through development, you know, the excitement from the Stoma team really inspired us to just kind of push it as far as we could. Um, and it's really something we are proud of. Um, and it's going to be an amazing thing to do. Absolutely. Now, I know in, um, in working with various designers, the designers tend to, you know, they, they, when they get started, they tend to have a, a, a preference for a particular design style that they incorporate into a lot of their work. Would you say that this is also true for Taladino Design Studio? Do you have a particular style that you work with? No. So, you know, that's, that's a good question. Um, you know, in our discipline, which is hospitality, we don't have the luxury of being able to kind of replicate our style very often. I mean, we might get a call from an Asian restaurant, then we might get a call from an Italian restaurant, then we might get a call from a casino. Um, we just don't have that luxury of kind of conforming to a specific style. Um, so with that being said, our, our adaptability has to be pretty vast. Um, and, you know, the one thing that I just Pushed our offices to never try to repeat or never kind of try to um, 
uh, start over again uh, or start something that's you know, been a design from the past. So mm -hmm. um, to answer that question, no, we don't have a particular style. What would you call the the style that you brought here? If, if we had to give it a name, if we had to give it a, put it under a, a into a silo under a genre, what would this be? I mean, I would classify this as kind of like a modernized version of a mid century techno design. Um, it's it's a mix of everything, you know, and that's where our studio really kind of prevails. Is we don't like to pigeonhole ourselves or kind of compartmentalize into one particular type of style. Mm -hmm. um, so if I had to classify this, it's kind of a hodgepodge of mid-century meets deco meets modern, um, you know, with a lot of amenity influences. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, 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 you know, and that's exactly what I was thinking as well. It's just I'm not a designer. So when I say it, I don't think it means as much as when you say it. But um, it's absolutely stunning. So what is your favorite feature? here at 10.30? So my favorite feature is obviously the rooftop, what you're looking at right now. Um, you know, when when I think of a place that we want to do, I think of where is a place that I would like to go, where I would like to live, where I would like to kind of show up and hang out. Um, you know, and, and Masu touched on this earlier and, and said that, um, you know, his ability to adapt and see kind of the foreseeable future is pretty prophetic because, you know, who would have thought that when we started this project, we would really be confined to our homes or, you know, a very small area of kind of where we can actually travel to. Um, and with that being said, this gives people that opportunity to really feel as if, you know, look, I'm stuck at home, I'm in quarantine, or I'm not able to go out and and do the things that I once, you know, was able to do. Um, and what a perfect setting to be able to sit and do that in your in the comforts of your own home. So you leave your your apartment and go up to the rooftop, and you're able to kind of sit um, in you know a, a rooftop terrace that has different areas to it. So you could be sitting there with other groups of people and really not kind of ever really have to interact if that's something you don't want to do. And when this all passes, which it eventually will, you have these great spaces to, you know, have friends over, have guests, have, have parties and uh, have events and just really kind of escape, uh, you know, to, you know, escape where you live, if you will. So it's a, it's a great opportunity. It's in a great space and it's a great place to really make that happen. Oh, for sure. And you, you know, you touched upon um, basically the basis for my next question, which is, you know, given everything that's happening and, and, and that we're going through right now, how do you see the future of, of architecture being affected by all this, specifically here in Miami Beach? Well, you know, I mean, there's, there's lots of, uh, there's lots of things that people are going to have to take a look at. Um, you know, one, I think in particular, which we've really started to study is, you know, the client's need or a client's needs to have their ability to work comfortably from home. Um, and, you know, wherever that might happen in your home, whether it's a single family home or it's a development, you know, a boutique development such as this, um, you want to have a space to where you know, you might have to get away from the kids and go upstairs and have a Zoom call or have a meeting um, and do that in a setting which, you know, kind of makes you feel as if, you know, I'm working, but I kind of feel as if it's not so bad being confined to home because I can kind of sit up here, I can get my work done, I can enjoy the view, uh, I can get some sun. Um, you know, so I think the future of architecture is going to be really adaptability to you know, the world and, and what might, you know, what might come at you. And I think a big influence is having a space to where you can comfortably work from home, um, but still uh, feel like, you know, you're at your home and it, it's not as bad. Um, that's one of the major influences we're looking into is, you know, that development side of it. Marilena, also, sure. I have to add, um, is not only architectural, it's uh, the technology. The technology is going to play a big role 
for any future uh, present and future uh, buildings and design it is super Thank important uh, 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 is uh, make you ab able you to not to touch anything and communicate the, uh, the face recognition or uh, just uh, the push a button quick uh, uh, or any other uh, uh, the, uh, technology that is available. And I, I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's going to be expanding and uh, for that purpose. And uh, uh, it would be exciting to see the, that the, that area is going to expand and come up with a new uh, invention, uh, really. And architectural that uh, Sean was uh, uh, talking about, uh, just giving an example of uh, the gym and spa area. And now in the uh, new building that we are doing, uh, instead of having a one huge space, we are subdividing those spaces and we are assigning one, one room for yoga, one for spinning, uh, one for, uh, room for the heavy weights. And uh, you, you just divide because you don't want to have so many people coming interacting together any, any longer. So for sure, you're going to see a, a lot of impacts on the design, architectural, and the technology that is going to be involved uh, for that purpose in any building. And the good things about 1030, we never, we never thought about this the pandemic, but it's perfectly designed for that purpose. All right, we have the best technology that exists so far. We have all the common areas that are very small. That is, we have several of those that it just contain maybe 10 or the, the 12 people rather than having a big space. So we, that space was divided in four or five. And then another thing that Sean uh, they, uh, uh, brought up that now that you want to live and work in your place. Uh, the, uh, the Facebook uh, employees, the, they have 45,000 people and half of them are planning to work from their home. So you, you need to be thinking of whatever you design as a rental or condo or uh, boutique uh, building. So you have to consider that now. So because you can't just be sitting in your place and confined without ha not having anything exciting that cautiously you can use and participate. And 1030 is a perfect example for that. Oh, absolutely. You know, you touched upon only some of the many smart features that 1030 is gonna have. Um, but, you know, we're also going to have the biometric readers, entrances, and elevators. We're going to have the latch keyless door entry systems with camera. So, you know, and, and again, you were ahead of the curve on this because you had planned this from the beginning. Before there was any pandemic, you were already thinking ahead. And so, you know, it puts 1030 in a very unique um, and amazing position to address the, the needs for today. We've already adapted. So, um, Absolutely, yeah, because uh, we want to we uh, have everybody able to just use their phone for any, any services they want, for any purposes, to open their door, to talk to the visitors, to give them access, for any purposes that you, you, you think, I want them just to use their phone and not to touch anything. Oh, absolutely. So do you think, do you see another project in your future in Miami Beach? Uh, absolutely. We, uh, we are looking at uh, other properties. We are negotiating so, uh, other properties and I want to continue the, um, the same concept. I like to have all my project based on that, you know, and add more technology to it when it comes available. Uh, uh, then uh, tweak a little bit of the design for other purposes. Uh, depends on the location and depends on the demand of the uh, uh, of that location. Uh, so every market kind of a little bit different. Uh, so we always improve every design that we make. And uh, I love this project and I love the location and the concept so much that we are talking and negotiating other sites. And uh, I look, we are looking for somewhere from 40 to 60 units in every building. We are not interested in less and we are not interested in more. So this is going to be kind of our branch of building in South Beach for that type of product for a while. Okay, well, to that end, how is 1030 similar and how is it different from anything you've already done? It's totally different because um, this is our first 
boutique concept. Uh, this is the first time that kind of we came out of the box and uh, we want to create these elements. And uh, when I met Sean and we were talking and I saw his work, the previous work that he did, that I saw, you know, what he can do uh, in, in, for the interior. And also he participated in exterior and just used the kind of elements to bring him from outside to inside or vice versa. So um, this, is, uh, this is kind of a different than what normally we do. And so for that, we set up a team that they're just gonna go that route and they're gonna concentrate on uh, this type of product and anything that is available in the market so, so they can integrate to that and come up with the new ideas. So it's a totally different team because I don't want that team mixed up with others that we normally do either as a rental or mix use or anything. It's a totally different team. So I want them to study. I want them to go uh, to the uh, outside. I want them to study uh, the projects that is being built in Europe and get the, a lot of cons ideas from those, those areas because they have a lot of cool ideas and everything. And I like to, I travel a lot, so I like to go to see them. So is, um, is that's what we want to do. Okay. And Sean, this last question is for you. Um, when, when you were putting 1030 together um, and, and using all of the information that you had at hand, you know, when, when, when you finally had this finished product before you, what was, or, or as you were creating it, what was the, the feeling that you were hoping to convey from the people that would ultimately live here? Well, I mean, your home is supposed to be the one place that when you do come home, you feel like you're in a sanctuary. Um, you know, the boutiqueness of the, the space kind of gave it uh, the feeling that it was a single family home as opposed to a multi family type residence. That was important. Um, you know, years ago I lived in a building and it was very frustrating for me to like the constant massive massive amount of people. Um, and you know, people that are not necessarily into that um, kind of wouldn't get that impression because you go to a small lobby, you go straight to your unit down a very well thought out corridor. You have small boutique little uh, areas to where people can kind of sit and congregate. So I mean I think the 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 feeling is that when you do come home to this space, there's, there's areas to where you feel like you can escape but maybe like a backyard in your home. Um, or the rooftop where it's something that feels like you have a rooftop terrace in your home. And, and the feeling is just to get that into there. Just to feel like the, you are, you know, home, but you're not really in something. You, you know, you're not really in a home. And that's the ultimate goal when we were putting this together is to feel as, that, um, to, to feel as if you were in your own home really while you're living with uh, kind of and that's really what it was uh, for us. And, and um, I think that message was really conveyed in, in the size of the building, um, not being too big, not having too overly uh, large type of hobbies or, or areas. And, um, it's really just about the sanctuary of your home. Thank you. Okay, so um, I'm going to open it up now to the audience. Um, please, um, if you have any questions, now is the time to start putting them into the Q&A, and I believe we have some questions. Uh, did I miss a mask question? Um, you did not, um, but I don't know what the question that you are hoping to ask is. So, Victoria, if you can please... Oh, rephrase your question, that would be great. Um, is this on the top floor? I think you were referring to the pink rooftop pool, the, the picture that is uh, behind me. Um, yes, that, that, that is on the top floor. It's the rooftop, which is uh, fourth, the fourth floor. Um, are there any other questions?
studios, pricing. Okay, so yes, uh, studios start at 498,000. They are approximately 650 square feet interior and they all have about 65 square foot balcony. Victoria, um, the property is still very much under construction. Um, you are welcome to come by the site. I'd be more than happy to meet you at the site and go over any details that you like. And also I will say that we are currently building out our sales gallery, beautiful sales gallery that's uh, one block away from the site, but it is not yet open. We anticipate that it will be open within the next two weeks. But I'd be happy to meet you anytime between now and then and we can go over uh, what I do have. Any other questions? We have the developer, we have the designer of this amazing project here. Now is the time to ask away and get into their heads and see things from their perspective. If there are not that many questions, that means me and uh, Sean have uh, done a great job and uh, cover all the uh, areas. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you. And Jacqueline agrees. It is true. <laughs> you just said you guys did a wonderful job at covering everything. So I'll just give it another minute or two, see if someone has any specific questions that they'd like to to ask. Okay. Uh, incredible project. Have you considered putting any art? This comes from Francisco and Del Rio. Yeah, so art is um, going to be a big part of the project, the art and the accessories. Um, again, it's going back to that boutique deal. Um, so, uh, Ms. And our team will work very closely with, um, with some art, local artists and some people uh, you know, that we are very influential and, and make that art like a rotating concept um, so that the, the lobby and the, the, the specific areas won't feel stagnant and they won't feel kind of repetitive or just you know, kind of dated after a certain period of time. So that'll be a rotating concept under the accessory phase. Okay. Uh, with regards to completion, we anticipate to deliver the building in April of 2021, so we're 10 months away. Uh, what is the uh, expected time of the project to finish? Uh, thank you. This is very beautiful, very exciting. Thank you, Victoria. Incredible project. Have you been yes, we there with the art? Um, HOA. Okay, so HOA for the building um, is actually the lowest in the area, the lowest that you will ever see. In this area, it is $391 per month per unit, uh, regardless of the unit size. Uh, I look forward to sharing the presentation with my clients. Natalie, thank you. Um, good luck with that. Uh, thank you, Victoria. Uh, thank you, great project and presentation. Best of luck. That's from Kain. Thank you. How long does it take for a project like 1030? <laughs> In all caps, we were yelled at. Um, Eduardo, uh, how long does it take for a project like 1030? Are we asking about uh, how long does it take to, 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 to construct this or how long does it take to design? We can answer both questions, I suppose. It, uh, the uh, design uh, basically um, takes um, kind of some time because uh, you're looking at the site, you envision what you're going to do. So by the time you come up with the right proper ideas and put the team together and uh, everybody comes up uh, with the pieces of the puzzles uh, and ideas. So I test it's gonna take some time. But this type of project uh, with the number of units that we have from the day that we start construction to the end is about 14 to 15 months. Which is amazing. I mean, you know. Uh, we really going I, I, Right. We're going very fast. You the, the ideas together and everything. Then you have to submit the plans to uh, city or a county or whoever is involved to get the, all the approvals. So that part of the process kind of is slow because we don't have that much control. So we have to go with the flow. And of course, uh, we are on top of everything. 
that that's going to be a the lengthy part of the uh, process, I would say. Okay. Um, Andres, um, I only got a part of what you said. You said to select materials, kitchen, and finishes. Um, what is the rest of that question? How long does it take to do that or what, what was chosen? I'll let you finish up that question and I'll go to the next one. What about parking and how many parking spaces does the unit allow or do we need to purchase or rent? So, um, you know, among the many amenities that make 1030 so special and so unique for our specific neighborhood is that we are including assigned parking to all of the residents. Studios will come with one parking space. One bedrooms will come with either one or two, depending on uh, the size of the one bedroom and the exterior uh, space that it comes with. And all of our two bedrooms come with two parking spaces. And what's even more amazing about our, our parking is that it will be a secure, covered garage. So very safe um, for the residents, very safe for the cars, uh, and, um, and very unique to the area. Andres, how much time does it take to come up with the design to select the materials, the kitchen, the finishes, et cetera? That is from Andres. Well, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll join in on that. Um, there's, you know, it's in these projects, you know, you have to be pretty quick because um, it is a moving target, but, you know, typically the base design would start and then the build design or the finish design or the interior design kind of kind of behind that. Um, the key to these developments is to get them up to the car, uh, on the building permit docket and get them into construction. And typically, the interior design aspect of that, which you have a little bit more time to craft, is not as important for the actual construction document portion of this. So, you know, a smart developer um, like the Stroma team would start the project and really kind of implement design as it kind of follows the more the look, the touch, and the feel. The base concept is already there for the initial project, um, which gives you a little bit more time to be a little bit more crafty. A little bit more uh, creative with the project. Um, so typically the interior design aspect of that takes about two to three months, but that's typically integrated into the construction document phase um, or the CD phase um, that's, you know, typically starts from the inception. Um, you know, so it, it's a two part portion of this. Um, and that's really how you get to be a little bit more uh, creative because you can take a step back, take a breather, and then start implementing the, the pretty parts. Thank you. Yes, you're, you're, and, 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 and you're right about that. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, you have all the standard sizes for a lot of these things. And so choosing the actual brand and model, I think, is something that we don't have to focus too much time or energy on in the beginning. The construction is really the, the main focal point. Um, Patricia wants to know, it's oh, she, not she wants to know, she wants to share with everyone that we are very close to Whole Foods, um, and she is correct. We're close to Whole Foods, we're close to Trader Joe's, we're close to Fresh Market, we're close to the new Target uh, that just opened up, as well as Publix. So um, you have more than enough to choose from. Um, how are the payment reservations? So we are currently going straight into contract. This is for Maria Piedan. We are currently going straight into contract. We require for domestic buyers a total of 15% down, that's one five. It would be 10% with the contract and then an additional 5% at top off, which we anticipate is gonna happen around the December timeframe, um, if not sooner, because we have been moving very quickly. Uh, for foreign nationals, it is a total of 30% down payment, and that is divided into three, 10% with contract, an additional 10% within 60 days, and then the final 10% at top off. Um, Patricia Elena would like to know, does the building have assigned storage room separate from the unit? Masood, would you like to answer that? Yes, we have. We don't have an assigned uh, storage uh, where we have a storage available to purchase. And um, yeah, we have uh, quite a few of the storage on the located, I believe, is on a uh, third floor. And it comes in the different sizes. 
And Patricia would also like to know, do we have a separate area for, say, bicycles, surfboards, et cetera? Uh, yes, we do. On the first floor, we have the space for the bike racks and everything yeah, that can store the bikes. Thank you. Oh, great. We got some very good questions that just came in. Um, so are there any additional questions before we wrap up? Thank you, Andres Suarez, to you too. Um, oh, and a comment from Parnaz Kohanin. Kohanin, sorry. I, I apologize if I mispronounced your name. She wanted to say, um, thank you. I love your architectural and uh, design ingenuity and creativity. Thank you. Thank you. Will you have model units? Jacqueline, we're gonna have a sales gallery that will be open within the next two, two weeks. Um, we hope, uh, if not sooner. And uh, we will have a model kitchen there for you to see, as well as designer swatch boards with samples of all of the finishes. And once we're open, I do hope you come by. I would love to give you a presentation. Any other questions? Ah, what was your inspiration to set the soft and nice colors? Ah, Eduardo, um, we covered that in the very beginning, but um, Sean, if, you, if you'd like to, uh, you know, go on the Miami Vice thing again, please. Yeah, so I mean, I think if you uh, look behind Maria's um, image there, you, you see the sunset. And if any of you guys have ever seen a Miami Beach sunset, it's probably one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Um, and I think that that's a big inspiration. You know, yes, Miami Vice was inspiration to us, but you know, the colors were influenced by the pastels of, you know, South Beach uh, era back in the day. And just trying to bring that element back or just kind of give it a little bit of a, uh, a kind of a throwback to the era of South Beach where it was pastels and deco type buildings and everything was colorful and the people were all so beautiful. And, and that's really what it is, is just to kind of add a little bit of air and uh, likeness to the to the the color um, to just make it feel like an exciting little place to to kind of call it home. yeah and to make it very miami mm -hmm. um so we have a request again uh from parnas uh wants to wants you to please come to the hampton in new york she says they are in need of modern art deco summer homes and boutique hotels so um, find them some good land and maybe they will go. Exactly. Find us a good piece of land and get in touch with us and definitely we'd love to be there. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so from um, uh, Hain, he wants to know, uh, will there be EV charging stations? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think we have that because we dedicated all the parkings to uh, every unit. And if they want to have that for their own, there's not a common area for that, but if they want to have it personalized, it, so we are able to do that. Yeah, so, um, just so you know, we do have um, a current buyer that doesn't even have an electric car, but they anticipate that they will have one. And so they've requested to have this charging station put at their assigned parking spot. So that is something that we can accommodate at their cost. Uh, the bike surfboard storage will be extra. Okay, so the bike storage, Jacqueline, is included um, with uh, the amenities of the building. It's gonna be off of the garage in the first floor. However, the additional storage lockers, which are private lockers, will have um, an extra fee uh, as they are limited in number. We don't have enough for uh, all 43 residents to each have their own. So, will you have some fitness equipments now from Yelena? We so, have the fitness in a sense of uh, the uh, weights and, the, uh, and those uh, nature, but we do have on the rooftop the yoga. Is it, uh, we do have and is a different type. So, if you are looking for a, a type of a yoga or uh, working out with a silk and hanging from a silk and everything, that's a place. But otherwise, uh, we don't have it just to say a uh, gym uh, that you work out with a treadmill and those things, we don't have it. So if I no. could 
about that. I'm sorry, Maria. So, I mean, you know, like, again, go, this goes back to the current situation we're in in the world. I mean, most people's gyms were shut down for weeks, for months. Uh, and this really gives you an opportunity to be creative with your type of workout, to really get outside and do something You know, to be able to work with weights and do different types of exercises um, that don't really confine you to an interior space. Um, and really promote that healthy lifestyle and that well-being of being outdoors and, um, you know, really getting that experience. I mean, there's a gym very well known at the end of uh, uh, Alton Road called Anatomy, and they have a whole rooftop um, exercise component that you get out there and you do different elements. You walk, you stretch, you, uh, you do different things with different free weights. Um, and that's really kind of the... Uh, mentality or the thinking behind this is not to have a traditional type gym that's confined with four walls, uh, but to be outside and really kind of be more creative with your workout. Um, and obviously that's a much better surrounding than being in four walls. So, um, you know, it, it's really more of a creative type gym where you can experience that, but also to have outdoor yoga events. Um, we've built a whole grass in studio um, that, you know, you could actually do events and do stretching and do morning meditations. Um, it's really what we feel is kind of the future of um, getting yourself and your lifestyle in, into a better shape. Um, it's something different and something unique. Um, and it's not confined, again, by the four walls. Is that, uh, as I want to do a, some follow-up, uh, is you can have your personal uh, free weights to, to take it upstairs. You can uh, work up with the robbers. You can do uh, the uh, they bring your trainer and do uh, kickboxing or boxing on the rooftop. So you can do there's space that you can be do a lot of things. So it's not your typical gym concept. No, it's not, and that's you know that's something that I think that we've all adapted to now anyway. Uh, I mean, I know in my in my development where I live, the gym has been closed for months, so I've had to get creative. Um, I've had to, you know, go outdoors and, um, you know, and it would be nice to have an outdoor space like we have here at 1030 that I could enjoy in that, in that way. Okay. Um, thank you. That makes sense. Um, okay. Parnas, I forwarded you my contact information. Feel free to channel everything through me. Um, Okay, well, um, that brings us to, um, to the hour. So I wanna thank everyone for joining us today. I really hope that you found uh, today's uh, webinar to be um, inspiring, educational, insightful. And um, I want to thank you, Sean, for your time today. Thank you, guys. And, and Masu, thank you as well for joining us today and for your wonderful insight. Thank you. Okay, so with all that, um, again, uh, everyone will receive a, a link to today's recorded webinar via email, the email that you provided at registration, along with all of my contact information. So if you have any further questions, if you'd like to uh, schedule an appointment uh, to meet with me at our temporary sales center, or if you'd like to uh, be included in future uh, updates and notices as to what's happening with 1030. Um, feel free to contact me and I will make sure that that happens. So thank you all again for your time today. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Stay safe and thank you. Be safe everyone. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. No, for sure. For sure, for sure. Yes.